I'd love to go home. But I think it's too late for me. Oh no, no, don't cry. If you go, you'll see a better city than the one I left. You'll see prophecies fulfilled. A city full of people worshiping Jehovah. And a new temple the most beautiful building on earth. One thing I have asked from Job. that I might dwell in the house of Jehovah all the days of my life. To gaze upon the blessedness of Jehovah. look with appreciation on his temple. <laughs> Well, he's not going to be getting an Oscar for that performance, is he? That was a low point, I think, in a long history of bad acting in these Bible dramas. It's difficult for me to think of a clearer example of bad acting than what we've just seen. That was pretty bad. And up to this point, the guy who's playing elderly Daniel sort of does okay, I think... His casting is pretty on point. He's delivered most of his lines in his dialogue in a fairly believable, realistic way. But here it just all it just all unravels. It's like he's been given one task too many. In this particular scene, he's been given this monologue requiring intense emotion. And I guess better actors could have pulled this off, but because he isn't an actor or he isn't a professional actor and he doesn't really know what he's doing yeah it's just all unraveled there hasn't it and i suppose it's at moments like this that you're glad that everything's so dark what is it with all this darkness <laughs> they've really spared us i suppose by making it so dark and sparing us from watching this scene in all of its glory <laughs> but there was something else i wanted to point out Again, throughout this movie, throughout this drama, we're seeing little hidden messages here and there that sort of hint at Jehovah's Witness culture and hint at what's expected of Jehovah's Witnesses. I found it interesting when Daniel is in dialogue with his friends and he says, You'll see prophecies fulfilled. A city full of people worshipping Jehovah. In a new temple, the most beautiful building on earth. Again, huge emphasis on building. We need buildings. Jehovah demands that people build him real estate in order to worship him. He needs buildings in order for humans to have a relationship with him, apparently. And you also hear about this concept of a city full of people worshipping Jehovah. In other words, worship of Jehovah is mandatory. 
And we see this sort of played out in the Nehemiah drama and to an extent in the Josiah drama, although that's obviously supposed to be earlier in the story. But in the Nehemiah drama, it's brought out how fanatical the leadership is to the point where they're mortified when children aren't speaking Hebrew. And the command is that the Jews should send out their foreign wives and their foreign children. In other words, families should be torn apart because the worship comes first. The worship must be pure in this effectively caliphate, in this religious state where there can be no plurality of belief, which is ironic when you consider that Jehovah's Witnesses rely on human rights laws saying that everyone has a right to believe as they choose. Jehovah's Witnesses rely on plurality of belief when it comes to arguing for their freedom of worship. But if they had it their way, I think it would be more like what's described here, a caliphate, a state where only one religion is allowed, and it's a religion that accepts the authority of the slave.